sometimes I'm prepping for a game in Foundry Virtual Tabletop and I have a map that just will not line up with the grid. Drives me insane. Today I'm going to show you how to fix that. What's up gamers, I'm Josh and this is Copper Dragon Games. On this channel we talk about Dungeons and Dragons, from virtual tabletop resources to product reviews and DM tips and more. If you love Foundry Virtual Tabletop, you may want to check out my collection of resources. It'll be linked above when the video goes out. And don't forget to subscribe, because there's more coming. Today we're going over a quick and easy solution for those maps that just never seem to line up correctly with the grid in Foundry Virtual Tabletop. So let's jump right in. I ran into this issue most recently when I was trying to set up uh, this map for the Sunless Citadel. This is the fortress level. As you can see up in the top right hand corner of this map, the squares are lined up fairly closely. Um, but the farther away you get from here, this point, uh, the more offset there is. And by the time you get to the other side of the map, it's just awful and kind of unplayable. So apparently this can be caused by a couple of different things. I've heard people say that it's because of the size of the lines on the map itself versus the size of the lines in the grid within the virtual tabletop. I've heard people say that it's uh, the image size issue and the way it's exported and has to do with uh, the, the squares not being evenly sized on the original map. I've heard that it has to do with compression issues. I, I, honestly, I don't really care what causes it. I just, it's annoying and I want it to stop. Uh, now, there are a couple of ways you can try to fix this, and some of them are harder, easier than others. If your map is small enough, your players might not even notice if you make the grid in the game completely transparent and just use it. But the bigger your map is, the more noticeable those differences get, the farther away you get from the point where you aligned them. There is this tool within the program, if you go to con configure, and then this little grid configuration tool that lets you kind of play around with the scale of the image and the grid size and the offset position and you can move it around and and get fairly close for some maps this works perfectly fine and uh and you can use this and it's problem solved uh but there are some maps that just frustrate me to no end at, that this doesn't work on and so i've been fixing this recently by just getting rid of my grid altogether it is a quick and dirty fix for this problem. Uh, it's not perfect. We'll talk about some of the disadvantages, but it is amazingly simple and takes very little time. And in my opinion, the the ease with which you can do this greatly outweighs any of the drawbacks. If you are going to use this solution, even though you're turning off the grid, you still want to go in and make sure that your scale and grid size uh, is is pretty close to what the size of a, a square is on your original map artwork. You want to get it pretty close because when you move actors onto the scene, you want to make sure that they are scaled appropriately for the map you're using. But it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to turn this off in just a few minutes. Uh, once you're finished and, and you've got a section that is pretty close, um, it doesn't matter whether there's an offset because we are going to commit to those changes and then back in the configuration screen just go gridless and save your changes and that grid within foundry goes away entirely from that point on you just use the grid that's embedded in the original artwork to determine how you place your your miniatures or your actors whatever and you just play your game there are two drawbacks that i know of uh, when you're using this method. One of them is if you're adding walls to your map, uh, you don't have a grid to lock to um, or to snap to. And so that can cause some issues because you have to like literally eyeball everything and it slows you down a little bit as you're setting up the map. Um, if it's a really complicated map like this one with a ton of walls, um, that might be an issue. If it's a uh, wide open space, 
that'll take you no time at all. If you were running like a cavern type setting with lots of curvy walls, you probably weren't going to be using snap to grid anyway. So that is a drawback that's worth considering before you uh, turn off your grid altogether. The other drawback that I'm aware of has to do with when you're measuring templates for like spell effects and that kind of thing. Normally when you measure, uh, you get the, the little highlighted uh, squares on the edge that show you which of these the effect is in enough to affect a creature within that square. And once you've turned off the grid, it no longer calculates that. Uh, it doesn't give you that little highlight there. I actually see this as a bit of a benefit as I've spent enough time with old versions of Warhammer 40k to know that uh, just holding a template over some miniatures to see how many are affected can be super simple and easy. And I don't mind not having that grid option attached to the spell effect templates. But again, it is a change in, in gameplay that may be noticeable depending on what happens during that session on that map and so it's worth considering before you use this quick fix there may also be some other add-ons or modules that are affected by this that i am just not thinking of off the top of my head but honestly this is a, a much simpler solution in my opinion than trying to fiddle with that grid tool uh, with having to open your maps in a different program and adjust the sizes like all that is just too much effort for me. I would much rather spend that prep time on uh, plot twists and plot hooks and NPCs and what have you uh, rather than trying to get the dimensions of a map right when this quick fix uh, fixes it in 30 seconds or less. It may not be the best solution, uh, but it is super easy. It doesn't take any extra skill. It's super fast and it's what I'll be doing. So there you have it. A quick and easy solution for a problem that comes up really often, especially when you're using maps that were not truly designed for virtual tabletops. If you found this video useful, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you head out, and I'll be back next time with more Dungeons & Dragons tips and tricks to make your game the best it can be. We'll see you then.